Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome to Art Club this week. And this week we are looking at making our very own kite. So if you are part of the Art Club and you have your art pack, you can go ahead and open it now. And if you aren't, we'll go through the materials that we have in there that you can gather up the same ones. So in the pack, there's gonna be a few pieces of paper, some that already have holes in them, and some like this one that don't have any holes. You'll have a piece of, quite a long piece of embroidery thread. And you'll have some of this shiny material, which is just a really light, reflective material. So if you're working on this and you don't have the pack, if you do have some A4 paper, if you can get some embroidery thread or something similar and quite a long piece of it, and then you can use paper or a little piece of very light fabric or light wrapping paper like this as well. So what else are we using today? You'll need a Pritt stick ideally. Um, sellotape will work too, but if you have Pritt stick, that would be great. And if you get a couple of things to color with, markers, coloring pencils, that sort of thing. And this rubber will come in handy as well if you have a rubber. And that's really it. So not that many materials for this week, but let's see what we can make with that. So to start, let's have a think about kites and think about where do you think kites were first invented? Have a think. There's kite festivals around the world you might have heard of. You might have certain countries that you associate with kites, maybe. Um, so when we did this in the class, there was a couple of really good guesses. So have a think. Where do you think kites were invented? Hmm. Well, okay, so if some people came up with China, then you're right to a point. So up until maybe about 20 years ago, it was pretty much accepted and known by everybody that, that kites were invented in China. They had paper and they had silk and they're both very, could be made into very light materials and they could use those to create kites. But actually, have a look at this picture here, this gorgeous island. Um, quite recently, there was some cave art discovered there. And on this island, they do actually have a tradition of making kites. But this cave art, now when I say that the Chinese first kites were about 3,000 years ago, um, this artwork was a lot, lot older than that. And you can see now, and in it, it looks like, and people are fairly sure that it is, a depiction of people flying kites. Can you guess how old this might be? We've had a little look at some old um, cave paintings and that, and we've seen ones that are thousands and thousands of years old. I wonder how old do you think these ones are? So when we were doing it in class, some people thought 5,000 years old, some people thought 20,000 years old. Well, it's somewhere in between the two. And these are about 11,000 years old. So it's very, very, very ancient drawings that are still perfect and you can go and see them even. Um, so on this island, they they do still have a tradition of making kites and it gives an insight into how they might have made them back then as well. Because in fact, they didn't have paper and they didn't have silk. Those technologies came much later. So what did they make their kites from? Have a few guesses and have a think. In the class, there were some good guesses. Um, some people came up with the idea of wood, but we thought, well, maybe that's a bit heavy. And then wood, you could make paper, but again, they didn't have that technology yet. They didn't have any light fabric. And there was another guess, which was animal skin, which is a great guess, but they wouldn't have used that. They didn't have the, the technology to make that really thin, the way they later made kind of vellum papers out of uh, animal skin, which would be thin and maybe could make a kite out of that. Um, so any ideas that they could have gotten in their natural environment? So some people, yeah, I, I guess some of you guys might have got the same thing is leaves. So if you got quite a large leaf, like these ones here, you could tie string to that and you might see that it would blow in the wind. Now, I wonder, did they get this idea from seeing leaves falling down onto the forest floor and seeing how they floated and flitted in the breeze? Um, and even still to this day, when they make kites there, they have a tradition of making them out of leaves. And there's an image here, you can see how they do that. So today, because in the art pack and what we have usually at home to work with is paper, we're going to look at the ch more Chinese examples about how to make a kite out of paper. And this will be one type of way you can do it, but there is so many ways. When I started looking at it, I was amazed just how many designs and how many options there are when you're making one. But I thought this was a good starting kite. 
And what else are we going to have to look at? We're going to have to think about the design because often kites are not just plain paper, but they have images on them. I'll show you the one I made earlier. So this is my kite and you can see it's made out of paper. It has a sparkling tail and I've drawn a tiger on mine. Now, where did I get that idea? Well, because we were looking at China and Chinese kites, when I was reading about them, I found out that one of the themes that they've been using for since the beginning has been the Chinese zodiac. So if you've done these classes before, you'll have seen that we looked at um, our zodiac sign and we found out what they were and we did a piece of artwork on that. But the Chinese zodiac is a bit different and it's based on the year you were born. So I'm going to put up a chart and it has all the different years and you have to figure out which year is your year and then find the animal that is related to it. So for example, have a look here. I'm 1986 and I can find that here and I am a tiger. So the year of the tiger. So take a look, take maybe pause the video, find your year, find which animal you are, which is your lucky animal. And we'll look at another picture because not only do these years have animals associated, they also have lucky colors and lucky numbers. So let's have a look at another picture which shows us that. So here again, you can see I'm a tiger. So my colors are orange and white and blue and gray. I wonder what yours are. My lucky numbers are one and three and four. So again, you might like to pause the video, have a look for yours. Are you a mouse, a rabbit, a snake, a dragon? and then find out what are your lucky numbers and what are your lucky colors. And you might need to write them down somewhere for yourself because we might use these to help us make our artwork for our kite. So get your paper and your lucky colors. I've got blue, which is the blue of the paper. I've got orange and white and gray. I'm gonna use a pencil and I'm gonna draw myself a tiger. Now you can use both sides. One will be on the top of the kite and one will be on the bottom. So I might do a tiger on one side and then do tiger stripes on the other. And then it looks a little bit like a tiger mouth with sharp teeth. Okay, and so the next part is the trickier part of putting holes where we need to and folding the kite together. So have your Pritt stick ready. Grab yourself a pencil with a sharp point and a rubber. So what we're going to do is fold the piece of paper in half this way. And the drawing that's in the middle, that's going to be on top of the kite. And the drawing that's on the outside will be at the bottom of the kite. So you fold it in half, then fold it in half again, like that. So you've got it in quarters. And then you're going to do one more fold just up here. Fold that in half here so that you have a fold here in the middle and a fold here. And then you're gonna put on this corner a hole through each one here. So I'm gonna put my rubber down. I'm gonna put a hole in here in this top corner. And you want to make it, so you make your hole and you wanna make it big enough not to rip the paper, big enough that you're gonna be able to get your thread through there. So you can put your pencil down a bit. This is a little bit tricky and if your pencil is sharp, ask for help. Then you're gonna put a hole here at this crease that you've made and a hole here in this middle crease that you've made. So let's put one here. And again, make the hole a little bit bigger so that you'll be able to get your thread through it. And then one here. So you'll be able to get your thread through there. You're gonna make that a little bit bigger. So when you open that up, you will have one, 
two, three, four, five, six folds. So again, you fold your kite in half and then in quarters and then fold down this top section like that to the halfway mark. Put a hole through this top corner, put a hole through this top crease and this bottom crease here in the middle. And that is your kite ready to go. So now what we're gonna do is put a little bit of glue on this here, this corner hole this a little bit of print stick there and then you're going to take that corner and without making a fold a strong fold you're just going to curve it down on top of this front hole here and you're going to make sure that you can still see through this hole that you've made so you've placed that right on top of the other hole so if I was to stick my pencil through, for example, you'd see the pencil is coming through. Okay, and then hold it for a while till that glue dries. And that's one done. And you can see how it's kind of starting to come together. We're going to do the same on this side. We're going to do a gentle curve down on this side. So first, put your glue on this top corner. And then this corner you're going to do a gentle fold down to here and make sure again that you're going exactly over the dot of the hole in the middle so that you can get your pencil through there. This is a little bit tricky so do ask for help from a grown-up if you have one handy. So you can see that Again, it's not, a, it's not a very definite fold, it's not a very strong fold, it's just a curve because what you want is for the air to be able to pass through here and here nicely. And then you still have this hole waiting for you here. So, the next thing you'll do is take a really long length, a couple of meters, maybe even something like three meters of embroidery thread. Take, take it, and again, this is gonna be a little bit tricky, so you might need to ask for help. You're gonna put this embroidery thread through this back hole here, right the way through. It's a little bit tricky. So it's gonna go right through that back hole, and then you're gonna weave it through the front one. So you have your thread hanging out here, in through this back hole, then out through the front hole, and then you're gonna tie a knot, with this piece here, onto here, so that there's a knot in this first hole here. And you might need to double knot that. So see what you have here is your knot here in the front, whereas the bit the, coming through the hole in the back is free and not knotted, okay? Okay, well done so now what you will have is your kite with your drawing of your animal and maybe you've put your lucky numbers or and used your lucky colors for your artwork and then you have your thread tied through with a knot the first hole and then coming through the second hole and you have this big long long piece like this now this will get really tangled if we don't find some some way of keeping it all together uh, neatly so one thing you can do is either Go to the garden, uh, if you have one, and find a stick, or the next time you're in the park, you might find a great one. Like I found that one in the park, actually. But for now, if you just have a pencil even in front of you, you could use that. And just knot the end of your big long piece of th embroidery thread. Maybe a double knot will be needed. Like that. So it's like this now. And then you're just gonna wind that. So take a little second to do that. It'll take a minute. I'm gonna just work on mine now. Now, your kite, you've got your string on your, your wooden stick or your pencil. Um, and the one final piece that you can do is if you have your art pack, you will find that you have some of this great stuff that we saw earlier. But if you are just working with materials from home, 
something like a really light ribbon, light wrapping paper, or even paper, the same that you made your kite from. If you make really thin, long pieces, glue them together, you can make a tail for your kite. I'm just gonna stick it in here. So into the back end of the kite, just like that. Just a bit of sellotape and it is ready to go. So you need to take it outside. Today, for example, um, I can see outside there's not much of a breeze, but even if you go outside and you run with it, you're gonna see your kite lift and you'll get to see it fly. So you'll have to do some running to get it going. But then if you can find a windy day um, and get outside where you've got lots of space, you can fly it. It'll fly really well for you. And that's it. So well done, everybody. Go have a play. Let us know how you get on. And if you want to share what you've made, that would be brilliant. And um, talk to you next time. Okay. Bye.